Right, I've got another Mega mailbag. Well, it's a mailbag, not Mega. It's only got five things, but there's a bit of test gear in this box. Let's find out what it is. I'll get to the box in a minute. Let's get the small stuff out of the way first. Uh, oh, right, yes, okay. In my last mailbag, I showed you these switches, which I actually just recorded the last mailbag. We broke into two pieces. I'll do a project where I can plug in a microphone into the front of a radio, like CB radio kind of repair stuff, and just have a universal system where I can then do testing much more easily. So the switches are for transmit receive control, and this is for audio connection. So the idea is I can put this onto a circuit board, and then I can plug in a BNC cable, and that gives me audio into the board, and then I can use the switch to control the feed of the transmit receive and the audio to change modes on the radio to do testing, just a bit, just a bit easier rather than using crocodile clips onto bits of wire connected to a microphone plug. I've been wanting to do this for many years, like a decade, probably I've been wanting to do this. But I never actually bothered to do it because I didn't do much, do much radio work. And... But now I'm getting myself a bit of a better setup out in my other, in my other lab, lab version 2, with my RF lab. I'm going to try and do more radio work out there maybe. I thought I'd get some stuff set up now and then I'm just plug things in and not have to worry about messing around with crocodile clips on the end of wires. Seems like a better idea. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon and that sort of stuff as well. I always say that at the end, I should really say at the beginning. Make sure you subscribe. If you're interested in mailbag videos or test gear repairs or electronics in general, then subscribe. Or, or any electronic repairs really, not just test gear. I'll fix whatever I can get my hands on. And there's another part of the project. So these are some yeah, five pin microphone plugs and sockets. Oh, it's 4-pin as well, 4-pin sockets. And it's 4-pin plugs as well, there we go. So what I was going to do is going to pull these things apart, going to strip them down and use the plug parts directly onto a circuit board. And then I'm going to mount the boards onto these plugs and then plug that in. So I've got a 5-pin and 4-pin like that. I've already got some plugs, obviously, but I don't want to use up my stock of plugs. I don't intend to use them very often. So I thought I'd just get some more plugs and you know, I've got... Don't worry about it. I've got my little sort of stock of them now. So I've got 4-pin and 5-pin sockets as well. Here's the handy to have, sometimes you have to replace them because they wear out. Thanks to my Patreons as well. Help me to buy things and get things together and tinker with little projects and come up with ideas. Also finance my mailbag for a start. So these are some shocky dyes, I think, if you remember rightly. Let's get one out. SR5100. So yeah, shocky diodes. I think there's a rate of 5 amps, remember rightly. I already had some, but I've used them in my projects here for these. I use them on my DC input here. So I've got my DC input coming in. The DC input coming in goes to a buck converter, which then goes through this shocky diode. So differently back feed from the battery charging circuitry. Um, so the batteries aren't discharging into the buck regulator. I'm using shocky because then you've got less power losses, less heat generated, that kind of thing. Just better than using silicon, generally. There'll be a link down below as well. Don't forget to check out my merch. That's all down in the description. That's not cutting. This is, yeah, let's use a real knife. Even that's not cutting. What the hell do I make yourself? <laughs> There's some more switches. Okay. Uh, right. Now, these are other ones which I purchased because I wasn't quite sure what I was going to use for my project. That's not really a big project. It's just a little tinkering around thing. It's not even particularly important. These are really small. So here we go. Here's a the switch there. Is that focused? So it's a two position switch. The other switches I've got a three position, which is what I'm really going to use, I think. I've got these because I thought I'd just give them a go and have a look in case they're good enough. I purchased a bunch of two position switches, I thought bought three different ones. Then I thought, actually, I probably want three position rather than just transmit receive switching on the radio. I also want transmit receive and audio on and off. Kind of makes sense. I could still use these because they're nice and compact and that's nice. That moves very easily. I can just use, I can literally just switch it like that. Very free moving. Whereas these ones are much stiffer, they're harder to use. So I don't know, I'm not sure. We'll see what else turns up and see what they look like before I make a decision which one I'm going to use. It's even just convenient having switches like this in stock because you never quite know what you're going to use. You might have to come across something which needs one of switches to replace one day. And then you've got some. So that's why I've got boxes and boxes of stuff because I tend to get a bit carried away. Now, moment of truth. What's in the big box? Now, in fact, it's quite a big box. It gives me some confidence about how well packaged it is. My last video, I had a bit of a rant about how I turned up being packed very well because there was no padding around it. Thankfully, it didn't get damaged in post. It was lucky, but uh, it's got plenty of other issues, I'm sure. I haven't got into that yet. There'll be videos on other piece of test gear. If you haven't seen that video in the last one, the last mailbag, which showed other piece of test gear which I purchased, which needs repair, go and check out my last mailbag video. 
Let's see what's in this one. Well, they, this person listened at least. Plenty of padding right around it. Excellent. Yep. I'm very happy with that packaging. That's good. They're going to get good feedback instead of bad feedback. Right. I'll come back when I've got it undone. Can you guess what it is yet? How about now? How about now? This looks like it's in pretty good condition, I have to say. Some of you may recognise the back of this. In fact, the name's there. It gives it away a little bit. This is actually in pretty good condition, the back. It's not bad at all. Set for 120 volts. I'm going to have to change that before I power it up, I think. And there's the front. So it's a Dana 1992 Frigsa counter. So I've done videos on a couple of these before. Where I've done repairs on them. I picked this one up fairly cheaply. It wasn't too bad. You know, I always watch out for these coming out from time to time. And sometimes the price is about right. And I'll just grab one. And this one looked pretty good. It's got a bit of a ding on the top here. It's a slight dent in the case. It's not a big deal. It's only minor. Bottom looks really good. It's got all the feet on everything. 1988. On the side there. July the 31st, 1988. What does that make it? 32 years old. And it's in this condition. It looks pretty good. So this is going to be a repair video. I know it's going to be a repair video. I can tell you straight away it's going to be a repair video. Before I even power it up. I will power it up now though. I'll change this voltage over and power it up and we'll see what comes up like. But I know it's got a fork straight away. I thought I might as well show you this. I've already got the screw loosened. Get this off. This is the retainer clip. There's the card. You pulled this out. So you can see this is 120. I want 240 volt. Get the light on it right. So I need 240. So I've basically do is just spin it around. And that'll then give me 240 volt and put it back in again. I do love these kinds of connections when I do this way. They're just so much simpler than messing around with jumpers and all sorts of stuff and opening up and changing wiring inside and whatever options there are. Just so much simpler. So I'll stick this back on here. Then I'll plug it in and power it up and see what happens. But I, I can say I've already noticed that it's definitely needs repair. No doubt about it. Which is exactly what I thought it probably need as well. So that's quite promising. Okay, let's plug this in. And I'm going to turn the power on whilst I'm recording video in case we get any magic smoke. So I've got a hobby meter over here which is just about in shot. Ready? Well it's booting. Doing that much. Hmm, okay. The reason I'm saying it needs repair is because I, I've already gone around and touched these buttons and some of them are definitely broken. So I've done this repair previously, replacing all the buttons on the front panel. They basically disintegrate inside, they just stop working and they short out inside. And when they short out, they'll do things like causing boot problems where you can't boot it up, it'll just get, it will latch up or lose keypad control or it won't count and that sort of stuff. It's really important that the buttons are in good condition. Um, they cause all kinds of problems. So if you get one of these counters and they're playing up, usually it's because the buttons are naked. Usually, not always. So let's hook this out to my RF signal generator. I'll see if I can read it. Well, it's reading something. Increase the RF output level so I can actually sense it a lot better. It might have been sensing me connecting up. Let's go um, 0.5 volt. There we go. It's sensing and obviously it's warming up. So it's actually working mostly, but this button here is knackered. That one's working. That one works, that works, that works, that works. That one's broken. That's broken. That works, that's broken. Is it? No, it's working. Broken. Broken. Oh no, that is working. Broken. 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 Yeah. So lots of buttons are broken. When I've done these before, it's taken me a couple of hours, I think it was, to actually remove all the existing buttons and replace them all. Trying to find the buttons is the hard bit. The source I had for the buttons I got before, they're gone. So I'm not even sure I can get the same buttons again. The ones I had before were almost exactly right. They weren't perfectly right. I had to glue the, the actual button caps onto the switches, but it wasn't too bad. They, they worked. Physically, they soldered on properly and that sort of stuff. It was all good like that. That was okay. Um, it was only really minor. 
So it's sensing. That's a good start, I suppose. Can I do a reset? I've probably screwed up all the sensing now. I'm pushing all the buttons. Let's see what I'm doing here. Turn off DC. Auto trigger. No filtering. And done a reset. So, frequency wise, it looks like it's out by a bit. Don't really care about that. That's minor. My Marconi's pretty accurate, so it's it's only off by a few hertz in the Marconi. So I'm not too worried about that. Let's increase the frequency a little bit and let's try a different frequency. Let's go 200 megahertz. That's there. That's okay. 500 megahertz. That'll count that high. I won't. Uh, what's it supposed to do on that input? 160. It's supposed to do 160 megahertz on that input, so that's fine. It did 200 just now. So let's go input C. And we'll change input C. 500 megahertz. That's also working. Um, okay, let's do 1000 megahertz and it's working too, so that's great. So both of those inputs are working. Input B, I never worry about input B, I don't think it actually does it much anyway. <laughs> it's more of a referencing thing. I'll just still warm up as well. It actually says increasing your frequency now. So we'll see what happens once it warms up as well. But I'm on my way about calibration. First thing I'll do is fix all the buttons. So yeah, there'll be a video on this coming up, so yeah. Also, I'm on library as well. You see, put it in Dave Jones, talking about library, lbry.tv. I'm on there. So um, I might, I think I've got a link down below on my channel. I can't remember if I've got a description or not. So go and check out the library link as well. Become a follower on library as well. Just an alternative option. I've currently got 180 followers on there, so I'm lacking behind quite a bit. Could certainly use a few more. So if you've watched this video, please go over to library, lbry.tv. Do a search for Def Pom, D E F P O M, as you, as you know, up there as it says, and um, or down there even. Search for Def Pom, and you'll see my, my channel come up. And make sure you subscribe to my channel; it'd be very helpful. So it's now been about half an hour since I first powered this thing up, and as you can see, one gigahertz, bang on frequency. Pretty damn close, one gigahertz. Pretty happy with that. Make sure you subscribe, click the bell icon, that sort of stuff, so in order to not miss the video and repair this thing, taking it apart. And so, thanks for watching. Catch you later, and I'll see you next video. And make sure you do subscribe, click the bell icon, and give us a thumbs up. Don't forget the thumbs up, it's important. Have a chat down below in the comments too. Bye. For doing um, a plug in, uh, what's the word, I'm trying to string the sentence together, and I can plug a RCA cable into it, RCA cable, and I can plug in a BNC cable,